Hey, so this is part two of the Atomos Ninja Bug. Uh, this is the solution that I use to get around it. And before I start, I just wanna say that this isn't really a solution. Uh, there is no way to get these LUTs, any LUTs on this Ninja to work, flat out, full stop. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just broken. Uh, Atomos have really botched this one. Uh, it does not work. Do not buy a Ninja 5 if you wanna put LUTs on it because they break and they are very, very inaccurate, so don't use it. So basically what I did is I went through the literature and the manuals and all that, and I came across a video that Atomos made. It's actually a pretty good video. It's way too long, um, but they've basically, the whole video is arguing that you should use PQ for everything. And now that I understand how this works, uh, I found it to be the best possible way of monitoring. Uh, so basically when you put a LUT on, right, if it's like one of the ARRI emulation LUTs that I have like this one, uh, what happens is it, it, it's destroyed, right? Like we've got below zero in here. It's totally screwed. You cannot do anything about it, right? I, believe me, I've, I've tried. Um, so that's just what you're viewing though. Now, this looks a lot brighter than it does if I were to say go back into PQ mode. Look how much more realistic that looks. You get much more, well, much better gradation and everything. You get a lot more dynamic range. You can see everything a lot more. Again, I'll just do that real quick. Because this is expecting a 709 exposed S-Log3, right? But this is expecting HDR exposed S-Log3 Cine, right? So really what everyone should be doing full stop is using this mode because it's designed to work with the ninja and it works extremely well it doesn't have the uh the below zero bug right there's a little bit going below there it's kind of hard to see but i think it's just like a rendering thing because i can still see everything extremely clearly um as you can see it clips right around a thousand because that's where the uh the monitor ends i think unless that's logarithmic and it's you know, like 2,000 or something, because 3,000 is so close. Anyway, um, this is the way to expose on the Ninja. Do not do it any other way. This is accurate. This is going to be what you see is what you get, right? Because, I mean, the Ninja's... Uh, the reason I got it, two reasons, right, is to get better crop, because I shoot ultra-wide for most things, and because it would let me see what I'm going to get in post, right? The really shitty thing about that is that that feature is broken, right? So you can't get accurate, you know, you can't get it in the accurate way that you want by putting your LUTs on it, which they advertise that it does, but that doesn't work. So you have to use PQ mode and expose that way. And uh, it's good. It's, uh, it's really good. It's beautiful. It's absolutely amazing. If you have a Ninja, and you've shot with a LUT and not known that the LUT's bugged or whatever, this will make your jaw drop. It looks absolutely phenomenal on PQ mode. You get to see every little bit of detail and it's brilliant. Now, the problem, um, some people, you, I, I like to use Leeming because of color accuracy and all that. And the cool thing is you can still kind of use it because this, you know, if, if you don't know what Leeming LUT is, it's exposed to the right, all that kind of thing. You can look it up, it, it's a long thing. Um, but this histogram here actually tells you a lot because that's that's clipping up there on the left. And as you can see, you can expose this exactly like Leeming LUT, except you're getting to see an HDR final. It's absolutely beautiful. So, sorry to disappoint, there's no Konami code on this thing, you know, like you, you press the power button twice and then you draw a smiley face on the screen and then it all of a sudden lets work. That's that's not the, the solution here. The solution is to basically just give up because Atomos really nail the visual aspect of their products, but just really fumble hard when it comes to the actual technicality of the devices, which is really sad because that's really why you buy them. So they should get that that's sorted out. So if I was going to expose for Leeming, I would basically just pull it down a little bit and now all the data is in frame and beautiful. Look at that. So you can also, with this LUT, uh, well, not LUT, uh, display mode, I suppose, you can expose how you think it should look and that's how it'll look. It's fantastic. 
Now, there's one huge, huge caveat to this, and that is it will be broken when you bring it into Final Cut, into Premiere, into DaVinci, but that's why I have editing magic and I can show you exactly what I can do to this stuff to get it corrected for a Rec. 709 delivery because you you really should watch that video. It'll be the top link in the description that of Atomos explaining exactly what PQ does and how you should always shoot PQ and then down convert it into Rec. 709 SDR in post and you'll still get better results. They do a great job at explaining that. Although their CEO looks like he's an advocate for a all carnivore diet, which is kind of sad. Anyway, oh yeah, no, that, it's like 1400, really. That's 1600, it doesn't max out at a thousand. Oh, I never knew that. Anyway, um, if you're gonna expose, use PQ, and I'll show you how to convert it and correct it in post now. So now I'm in DaVinci. Uh, now this is gonna be kind of specific. So the first thing you wanna do, here's a, a LUT, uh, broken, destroyed wrecked look at that look at the highlights look at the the blacks absolutely uh broken completely so what you have to do is you go to clip attributes and you change it to full because s log is recorded in full see how it brings it back a little bit more it looks much better now still overexposed because we exposed it for hdr but i'll show you how to correct that in a second so here's the metadata for this exact file i have no idea why DaVinci reads this as being limited. There is no flag in here at all, except maybe this. I don't know why this is here, because it isn't. This isn't 709. Um, as to why it automatically brings it down to limited or vi video level, there's nothing in here that says to do that. So uh, another buck for Atomos to f never get around to fixing. Um, so, I don't know what you do in this case if you're using Final Cut or Premiere. I've never really used Premiere extensively, but I know Final Cut doesn't have an option for this. I will be getting a MacBook later this year, so maybe that's something I can test then. But as for now, I don't know what you... I, I guess what you can do is get a video to full level LUT conversion. Uh, Gerald Undone has one. There's a bunch of them online for free. So I'd suggest putting that in front of this, and it would correct it in Final Cut. Um... So as you can see, uh, blown out. Uh, it doesn't look bad. I mean, the, vec the histogram is fine. Or the scopes are fine. It, it, it's good. Uh, so basically, all you'd really have to do is uh, bring the offset down. And you're basically adjusting the exposure that way, uh, specifically in uh, DaVinci. I mean, they all have sliders, right? until you find something or how, however you like it, right? So like that's messed up, uh, that's messed up. So I'd bring it down a few stops. It's usually two or three stops. And the reason I know that is because this LUT that I'm using right now, it's from Emotive Color. And he actually gives you some really cool supporting files. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Okay, so you've got black level adjust, ceiling modifiers, but you want exposure conversions. This stuff is cool. So this is based on the camera's sensor data. He, he makes these to act exactly how the camera does uh, in terms of exposure. So this plus one stop is designed in a way to look exactly like if you overexpose the footage by one stop. Here's a two stop, right? That is what it would look like to the camera. Really cool stuff. Now, the cool thing is, you can come in here and drag a minus one stop on it, and that'll give you a much better corrected image. See, I think that looks pretty good. Or you can go, you can add a two in there. That looks a little bit better, maybe. So the highlights have changed. And you can always come in here, right? You can push those highlights back up. That's usually what I do with uh, leaming because sometimes those get messed up. And you can stack these. So if it was really, really bright and you had a lot of stuff overblown, you can put a two and then you can put a one and it'll make it a three. So that's fantastic. So let's reset this and I'll show you the same thing with leaming just as another example. Here we've got the stuff. Here's Athena and look at that. It works almost drop and play. Uh, this is what I was talking about with the corrections. Let me see real quick if I change this back to video. Nah, it clips it, see? So it is definitely supposed to be full. So yeah, you can see all that detail come right back. Okay, so then usually what I do is I'll just, you know, bring the highlights up because the highlights are supposed to be bright. 
and then bring the blacks down. I, I sometimes crush my blacks, I admit it, but that's something left in post because I edit on a OLED TV, so it looks really, really nice. And that's that's it, that's the solution. Um, you can use leaving let natively. Uh, obviously you can mess with uh, curves in post, bring it up a little bit, change it how, however you like it. Uh, because this is a color accuracy LUT, I can go to where his vector scope, and you can see how really accurate these are. They're all like the same, almost the same distance apart. He hasn't updated this one in a while. It should be coming pretty soon. So keep your eyes out for that if you don't know what this LUT is. Um, but again, let's let's use Sony, right? Uh, Sony. Here we go. Uh, S Cine. S gamut three cine to I guess what this one I I don't really use these ones <coughs> okay so uh, destroyed right doesn't work busted kaput broken exposure conversions now let's see what happens if we bring it down a stop okay much better but still over that's two Pff, I don't know what this is I don't know what's going on here I never use these LUTs. Let's change this back to parade. See, that's... Well, that's actually kind of correct, isn't it? I haven't done anything wrong. I'm not really sure. Maybe... Um, I don't know. I don't know what's up with this one. I guess I, I pulled the wrong... Uh, where is it? S-log3, s gam 3 I don't know what's up with that. Uh, if you have an explanation for it, go for it. But I, I don't really use that LUT, so I've, I've never encountered that problem before. This is what I would usually use if, if I'm going for, you know, like a standard ARRI emulation. It's very, very good. And then I just pop that on and I'm done. But sometimes I do use Leeming, depending on what it is. So let, let me go back. So here's a, uh, a clip I recorded. This is after Elaine and I had just snagged our 3090. We were very excited about it. And I thought it looked really funny <laughs> how big it is compared to her. So this is exposed in the exact way that I was describing it, using PQ as the monitor, right? So there we go. Uh, you can see it's a little bit overexposed already. So first thing we got to do is go here, clip attributes, change it to full. Brilliant, now it looks more like a, uh, a log format down here on the parade. Uh, then we'll just add some nodes real quick, add the ARRI LUT. That looks pretty good by default, honestly. I mean, it is a little bit bright, but the, but the outside was already overexposed and blown out. Anyway, so uh, ceiling modify, uh, exposure conversion. So here we've got minus one, pop it on. Man, that looks even better. Look at the, the you get some some of the the railing outside you see that pop back in and uh that's really all i do it, it does depend per shot which exposure conversion you put onto it maybe two would look better for this one you know, i see it, it's kind of i wanted to keep some of this but i wanted this as well and i kind of compromised the shot because of it but that looks pretty good so let's do it one more time with uh mr leeming where are you okay there Man, look at that come back. That's way more than the Ari one. Um, so maybe this one needs a little bit more exposure. So let's add one stop. That blows the background out a little bit more, but we get more detail on her. See, that looks good. I like that. Uh, now, as to why the parade here... Oh, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> See, that's clipping here. You can see the on the highlights there and the blacks are raised a little bit. That's just because that's what Leeming does, the, the black thing. So this, this is overexposed. So perhaps I'd rather do manual for this one. All I would do is uh, raise it up there and give it some... Well, I guess what I would rather do is... I know, I'm, I'm rambling here. I'll finish up in a second. Uh, you can't... Okay, so I can't pull that down. That's right, because the, the LUT's on it. So I just pull this back down, get all that data back, and then I go here, and then I push the blacks a little bit down. This won't work for the whole shot. I think I was changing exposures. But I mean, that's that's what I saw. I mean, obviously it's not HDR, but uh, should I do one more example? 
I don't know what, what clips I have. This is just a clip of me with my family while we're having a, a, a barbecue. And I remember exactly what this looked like in real life, at, at least on the HDR monitor. So in order to show you what I think it looked like, I'll go and apply the leaming because that gives better color accuracy. Look at that. That's pretty much done already, honestly. Uh, but it is a little bit messed up. So let's go and see what we can do with exposure conversion. It's a little bit over. Let's try a 0.66 stop. Yeah, look at all that come back. Did you see that? Let me do, a, okay, so the blue channel's clipping on there. So two stop, look at that. I'm gonna turn that off. It really doesn't look that bad because the only things blowing out really are the, the shirt here and, and the highlights on the plate but you do get all that back. I think that looks fantastic. Then you just go over here, raise the whites a little bit, just a clipping point, and then lower the blacks to give it more uh, contrast. And there you go. I think that looks pretty damn good. Stupid pug in his Hawaiian shirt. I don't know why they did that. It's still pretty funny though, I suppose. Anyway, vector scope, perfect. Looks fantastic. Very, uh, very accurate wonder what the uh, vector scope would say. Uh, okay, that's not helpful. <laughs> Let's reset this. Uh, we'll do another ARRI one, and this will be the last example that I'll show you, because this is, uh, I can just keep going. <laughs> Here is the daylight, put that on, blown out, destroyed, cup put, broken. So, I think this is a pretty bright shot. Yeah, see, one didn't really, really fix it. Let's try two. Oh, that's much better. Look at that, look at the parade. That is fantastic. Look at that. Let me uh, blow that out. Oh. oh, that's what that does. I think it's... So, maybe it's a little bit still, a little bit overexposed. What did I use on this one, a two? I think I used a two. Okay, let's try three. Let's add a, th a third one. That adds way more contrast back in. Now that this is okay because that's how the ARRI transform works. I think that actually looks better. I think the roll off is good. Look at look at the skin tones and everything. I think that is that is fantastic. So that's how I do it. Record PQ display. Uh, come in, correct it. See, I think I pushed the uh, blacks. But yeah, see the the Ari one's really good in the black levels because it it kind of like just comes to crushing them, but it makes everything look super clear. Uh, anyway, so that's the process for this. Use PQ for the display on the Ninja. Bring it in and adjust exposure. You don't even need these LUTs. You can put on whatever Ari emulation LUT you have, and then come in here and then adjust the offset. Um, though I find that that isn't as accurate as using uh, his offsets because the offsets can be used for multiple different LUTs. See, even here, I think that these black levels are clipping. So I, I stick with the um, his, his conversions because they're fantastic. Anyway, uh, that's it. That's the process that I use. Um, the only thing you can do outside of this is write Atomos a very strongly worded email saying, you know, hey, your shit's broke, you gotta fix it. Um, fat chance they'll listen to you because there was a bug, the, the legalize issue that uh, they didn't fix for three years. And then when they did, <laughs> they, uh, they put in the worst fix implementation for it possible. They could literally, literally have just written down metadata into the file and fixed it that way, but they didn't do that. So, uh, and it took them three years too. So that's really sad. Anyway, um, that's the process. I hope this is helpful to you. This is how I do all of my stuff. It doesn't mean it's the only way or the correct way, um, but it's the way I do it. And I hope it saves you time because I think the end results are uh, fantastic. So, yep, thanks for watching. Um, let me know if this is helpful or if you have any questions, I'll get back to you. Uh, yep, goodbye.